Hey guys, welcome to Samco Workshop. Jason Samkovic here, where today we're going to talk to you about the dangers of slightly used vehicles. Okay, we see this all the time, these slightly used vehicles. doesn't matter if it's on a car dealer's lot. It doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, um, a small little lot. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, like a Ford dealer, a Chevy dealer, any of these kind of things. We see this more and more now, and it's crazy, all right? So we got to watch out for some of these things. But when you see a vehicle that's maybe a year old, 12,000 miles on it, 15,000 miles on it, 8,000 miles on it, you get excited because you think you found a steal of a deal. You think you found something that's a, a good buy, um, you know, whatever the case is. And sometimes you're right, but oftentimes you're wrong. Oftentimes you're getting screwed and you don't even know it. <clears throat> so what what happens here, okay? What, what is the deal with this? And I know so many people that have fallen victim to this. I personally have fallen victim to this in two different ways, which I'll show you. Um, but in how do we how do we solve this? How do we prevent this from happening to us? Well, uh, slightly used vehicles. When we see these, like I said, we get excited. What is the number one source of slightly used vehicles out there? It's going to fit into these categories here. So when you see a slightly used vehicle, good chance that it's a rental dump. Okay, <clears throat> what's a rental dump? Enterprise, Hertz rental cars, Avis rental cars, okay? These guys buy these cars that they rent, that you go to the airport and you rent. Well, they buy them every year. They put 12,000 miles on them or whatever it is, renting them, and then they turn around and they sell them off. Dealerships buy them, clean them up and make them look sparkly pretty, and then resell them. But they're rental dumps. They're rental vehicles. That if, so you might see a vehicle that's only one year old with 12,000 miles on it, but it that there are people that have drove that vehicle and had zero respect for it whatsoever under any circumstances. So they've been beat, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they've been run through the ringer. So a, uh, um, a, a rental dump is, is a problem, okay? A rental dump is not something that you want to get involved with or mess with, in my opinion. They've just been, they, they've just been, they're, they're torn up, they're beat up. Okay, um, but that's one of the most common. That is by far the most common deals uh, that you see for a slightly. Okay, this is the key. This is what grabs your attention and makes you get all excited thinking you're going to get a deal over new, uh, but then you get stuck in one of these, and this here becomes a problem. Um, another one is dealer demos. Everybody gets excited when dealer demos, I've owned two of them in the past, all right? And I've fortunately never had a problem with one. They've both been great. But I love when the sales guys say to you, they're like, oh yeah, we just, it's a dealer demo. That means that the, the sales guys, when we got to go run and get uh, coffee or lunch, we'll take one of them. It lets us kind of get a feel for the vehicle. That's all crap. What a dealer demo really is, is means when somebody owns, for example, let's say that you got a Ford F-150 and you have to bring your F-150 in for a recall because Ford's had like a hundred of them in the last year. I'm exaggerating slightly, but I think they're up to like 23 or 24 they had last year. But well, you Ford, for example, when you bring your F-150 in for, for warranty work or repair work, they give you a new F-150 to drive while yours is down for a week. You get to drive the dealer demo okay you get to drive a dealer demo so what you see is a dealer demo and he told you they just it's the sales guys running to go get lunch and coffee is really a vehicle that has got three four five hundred people that have used that vehicle throughout the year um, while theirs was down and they don't care about it it's treated just like a rental you heard the phrase drive it like a rental okay same concept both of these vehicles are driven like a rental the next factor Corporate lease dumps, okay? Corporate leases, when co companies lease vehicles um, for doctors or medical or anything like that, you, you got a lot of companies that buy a, a car for their employees. These corporate lease ones, a lot of them are, again, a yearly thing. They are one year old, 12,000-ish miles on them, and then they dump them. Now, these ones are at least really pretty much only driven, they're driven by one person for that corporate lease deal most of the time. It's one person taking them. Um, but that person that takes them does not care about that vehicle whatsoever. Uh, oil changes are usually skipped. Things are not treated right. They're just, they're, they're not maintained like you would want them to. Tire rotations aren't ever done. Um, not, not the, they're not cared about. They're the 
work bar, the company car. Nobody cares about it. Um, they're never washed. They don't get washed all, all winter long if you're in a salt state. Uh, nobody cares about underbody protection. Nobody treats them for anything. They're just, they're, 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 you know, they're treated like garbage is what they are. So these ones, but of, of the ones that are on here, these last couple are, are, are not as bad as these. These are your really dangerous ones. Okay, in my opinion. Now the dealer demo, not so super dangerous either. But again, remember dealerships don't think of a car as a car. They don't think of a vehicle as a vehicle. They don't care about it. To them, it's a dollar sign. It's a commodity. They don't care. And they know that as long as it looks shiny on the outside, somebody will buy it. And they, you know, they can always do the deals. So they don't care about them. Something to consider in there. So um, these are the two that I prefer to stay away from the most. This one also I don't want too much to do with. Lemon vehicles are another one. If, and, and when I say lemon, I use the word loosely. I don't mean that it's been filed and claimed as a lemon vehicle because those ones are usually not put up for sale again um, that I'm aware of. I'm not sure on that. I've never claimed lemon law or I've never filed a lemon suit. But what will happen when I say this, lemons and problems, is somebody will buy a vehicle and they're going to have one or two problems with it. And, uh, for example, let's say that uh, the 2023 Colorado that came out, uh, somebody buys that vehicle and then that over-the-air update kills his car and shuts it down and he goes out to start it one day and the battery's dead, won't start, he's pissed. Okay, so then he gets it repaired, he throws it, he's like, okay, whatever, and then two months later, that second over-the-air update does it, and it kills his battery again, and now his car's dead. He's done with it. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. I'm selling it, getting out of it right now. I cannot have my vehicle not be reliable, and he walks away from it. Um, those are usually okay to get because of the fact that they are repairable. They are repairable and, um, you know, they could get those problems fixed. It's just people being impatient with some of those kind of things or real problems that are happening. Um, but those are things to consider in here. But these are the bulk of them. Now the danger, the really bad one is this. I fell for this one time and I bought it from a very well-known dealership in Michigan. Okay, I bought a used vehicle from them thinking that it was good vehicle. I did not get a Carfax report. I did not do the stuff I should have. I just took his word for it and I bought it and then came to find out that it was actually a rental vehicle that was a Canadian vehicle that they converted to American bringing it over here. Now, so if you are in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, New York, you are in any of these, these anything that borders Canada... They do this a lot. They're going to have a Canadian vehicle that deals with Canadian winners and all the crap that it has to up there and all that stuff. And then they are going to import it into the States, change out the dash layout on it. They actually pull the dash apart, put a new instrument cluster in there that's converted to uh, everything is converted over. And then they sell it in, in the U.S. You cannot get your warranty on this. You cannot nothing. These are bad, bad news. Okay. Um, now, fortunately with mine, the day I got it, I realized this, figured out what was going on because they left the the uh, uh, registration in the glove box. Just it, it was in there, and I happened to see it, and I saw <coughs> that it was an Enterprise Rental Corporation car, and it was a Canadian uh, registration. My heart sank. I called up, uh, um, I called the dealership up. Told him I was pissed and I was taking it back, and he, I said, um, "But I'll tell you what. Instead of me taking it back." If you will pay for a five-year, hundred thousand mile or hundred twenty-five thousand mile extended warranty on this in full from Chrysler, I do not want a uh, secondary one aftermarket. And uh, and they did. And I said I will actually set the uh, warranty up. They will just give me the money for it. And they, they agreed to, so they paid me that money. Um, but what I did on that uh, vehicle is I called Chrysler directly and I told them, I said, look, this is what happened to me. I'm in a world of hurt here and I'm not happy. Can I get a warranty on this? And they said, under the circumstances and the amount of time that it only passed since you bought it, yes, we will honor that, the low miles that were on it. So they did and I did that and the vehicle turned out to be pretty good and served me well. But it was the point that I did not know this stuff. Had I not saw that one slip of paper, I'd have been in real trouble thinking that I got a slightly used, low-mile vehicle with warranty left, and I would have had nothing because it was actually a Canadian vehicle brought over here. So you have to watch this stuff. How do we cheat this? How Or not cheat it. How do we know that we're not being cheated? Two simple things never, ever pass on. 
two simple things that you never ever pass on. I repeated that on purpose. Carfax vehicle report, okay? And then also from the dealership, which they have them on pretty much every vehicle today, everything is computerized. Your car, your truck, all these things talk to, um, to a network out there and say what's going on. The other one is a VHR, okay? VHR, that stands for, I'm not going to be able to write this very well sideways, but it is your vehicle, okay? Vehicle history. This is the key, your history report. Report, that's what this is. This is a vehicle history report, VHR, vehicle history report, um, that the vehicle sends to the networks that the dealerships can get and access. It will tell you how often oils have been changed, okay, if they're taking it in somewhere, uh, which there, I think it's like 2% of the population changes their own uh, oil change, their own oil now. I do on mine. All mine, I change my own, but I actually keep a log record that shows a picture of the receipt. So I have a picture of the receipt and the dates that I do it on. And so when I sell my vehicles, I submit that information there. Because um, don't even get me started on a stupid 10,000 mile oil change. As a matter of fact, when I'm done with this, I'm going to make a video on that. Um, but... Uh, but so you want the VHR. You get the Carfax report, which is going to tell you any accidents. It's going to tell you any problems that have been done with the vehicle. It's going to tell you where it was originated from, where it's registered at, how many owners it's had. It's going to tell you everything you need. If it was ever a uh, leased vehicle, a service vehicle, any of that kind of stuff, um, it's going to tell you. If it was ever a rental vehicle, it will give you all that information. And then the VHR will tell you uh, the same kind of stuff, but also tell you the maintenance schedule uh, that was done, how often things were done to it, any uh, repairs that have been done. It's got all the information. So these two things right here are how you know that you're not getting this stuff right here. Because there are some really good deals out there on vehicles. And most of them almost kind of come into this category not so much lemon type problems but these where somebody buys a vehicle and then they just don't like it or they just want to get a new one or whatever the case is <clears throat> look at me i mean <clears throat> i go through a new vehicle about every 18 months the ones I'm selling or that I get rid of, they're flawless. You could buy them for me and they'd have no problems whatsoever. They've been fantastic vehicles. Um, I'm just swapping out because it's my smart financial move. But there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of good slightly used vehicles out there. But that a lot of good, in my opinion, is in reality is going to be one out of every ten is going to be a good vehicle. The rest of them will fit into this category. This category, you don't want to play in. It's not the right place for you. Maybe the dealer demo one a little bit, especially if it's only got like 2,000 miles on it, 1,800 miles on it. Now you're all right. But some of these some of these dealer demos I see, they're basically nothing short of a rental dump is what they are. So uh, they're a dealer-owned rental dump. Um, so you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. So hopefully this vehicle helps steer you in the right direction. Thanks for watching.